Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. So today I want to show you how you can sell a multiple currencies on Shopify. Yeah, I'll show you how to set this up using Shopify payments and then also one alternative and yeah, when to use which. Also cover the most common questions and in five minutes or so you will be able to make an informed decision and also set this up yourself. Sounds good? Awesome. Then let's have a look. All right, so then let's get started with what I think is the best way to do it. Um, and that is by using Shopify payments. Why is it the best way? Because it's the only option that also allows customers to pay in the currency of choice, as in completing the order, right? There are many ways to display converted prices, but Shopify payments is the only option that also lets customers check out in their currency of choice. So let me show you that right here. The base currency for this store is USD. But let's say we have a customer from the UK and yeah, they rather prefer to check out in pound because that's a currency they're more familiar with. Now with Shopify payments, they could also go to the checkout area and would see the price in pounds right here as well. Yeah, and that's something only Shopify payments can do and other apps don't because they can't interfere with the checkout. Now setting this up is also relatively straightforward. So as you can tell, I'm in the admin area of my development store here. And in the lower left corner, we can find the store settings. So let's bring these up. And somewhere in here, we should find one section called payments. And now, as I mentioned, this is a development store that I'm using for demo purposes. So you can ignore this warning here that yeah, development stores can only process test payments. Makes sense. But somewhere on your end, you should see a section with Shopify payments. Yeah, and if you don't have that enabled yet, you might need to activate it first. It's also one of the most common payment gateways across all Shopify stores. So you should actually activate that if you can. And that's also pretty much the only limitation with this method because Shopify payments is not available in every country yet. So I guess I'll just leave the list of yeah, all supported countries in the description so you can clarify that right away. And if you can't use Shopify payments, then your only option would be using an app. However, many countries are supported, so your chances are pretty good. All right, now let's assume you have been able to activate Shopify payments. The next step would then be going to markets, which you should also find in the left navigation somewhere. So markets right here. And markets are awesome. They're still a relatively new concept. It's kind of like your central hub for managing international markets. Yeah, hence the name, I have to imagine. <laughs> And yeah, this is awesome because it can now all be done from a single store. And in the past, we oftentimes had to do multi-store setups, let's say one store for every country or for every region. And now all of that can be done inside markets. So from just one single Shopify store. And here we can manage things like multiple currencies, translations, uh, local shipping methods for different markets. Uh, we can even localize website content already. So yeah, pretty cool stuff, but all of that exceeds the scope a little bit. So let's focus on multiple currencies. And as you can tell, right now I'm starting from a blank slate. So I only have the default stores location right here, which is set to the United States. And let's go ahead and add a second market in the upper right corner. And yeah, first of all, we can name this whatever we want. So maybe we can create one for the UK. So I call that market UK. And then I have to select the countries or regions that I want to add to this market. So in this case, it's just going to be the United Kingdom. Select that, add market. And now it immediately got me to the settings for this market. But if we go back, you should now be able to see that this market was added right below. Yeah, so, and if we click into that, we can see the settings again. And for now, the most important section would be products and pricing. And in here, we can first of all select the currency for this market, which has automatically been set to British pounds. Makes sense. We can also manage the exchange rate right here. Per default, that should be on dynamic, which means, yeah, you can read this right here. Um, it determines the exchange rate at the time of purchase, like at the time of the transaction, basically. If you have a good reason, you could also use a manual exchange rate, but usually I would advise against that and just recommend to use the dynamic one at the time of transaction. I think that makes more sense. And if you want, you can also configure some price adjustments. So you can increase or decrease the price for all your products by a certain percentage. Uh, that could make sense if let's say one market has less purchasing power or maybe, um, I don't know, the UK values coffee so much that they are willing to pay higher prices. I don't know. Um, so yeah, different reasons to do that. 
Or alternatively, you can also override the price for very specific products manually. Uh, but yeah, usually I would just leave everything on default with a dynamic exchange rate. And further, you can also see that prices automatically get rounded. So by the time I'm recording this, the coffee here costs 12 USD. And today there would be roughly 9.19 British pounds, yeah, which looks a bit awkward, right? So the prices automatically get rounded to the most common format in that currency. And it seems for British pounds, that's like an even number, a natural number. And for a market like Germany, it might be that the most common format is 9.95 or 9.99 euros then. So that depends a bit on the market. All right, now with that set up, let's actually go back to the market's overview. Yeah, we're almost good to go. But before that, let's take one super quick look at the preferences also located in the upper right corner. And here I would recommend double checking that automatic redirection is on so that visitors already see or automatically see the right currency. And if you want, you can also enable or disable the price rounding that we just talked about. Uh, but I guess it makes sense to leave it on. All right, now with all of that set up, we might already be good to go. So let's actually go back to our online store and then themes so that we can preview our storefront. Um, right now, I just have a recent version of the Dawn theme installed and then I'm clicking the three dots here and then preview. And if you now see the front end, you might be lucky and already see a currency converter somewhere in the header section. On my end, it's disabled right now. Or you might also find one in the footer area, which could be right here, for example. And now I would be able to select the right currency. Now, if you don't see a currency selector, that could be for one of two reasons. It might just be disabled in your theme and I will show you how to activate it in one second or it might not be built into the theme yet. But yeah, most of the modern themes already come with the currency selector. So let's see how we could enable these. So therefore, I just go back to the admin area and then bring up the theme customizer. So you can just click customize. And I'll zoom in here a bit so you can read this better. Usually you would either find the currency selector within the respective element. So for example, the header section right now, and then let's see the settings. Those settings might be on the right half for you, depending on screen size, right? So I'm just zooming in here so you can read it better. And down here, let's actually see, yeah, country and region selector, enable country region selector. And if I do that, you can see that it indeed appears right here. So in this case, it was just turned off. The same is true for the footer area. So here we have the other currency selector that we just saw a second ago. Um, so I could enable or disable that right here if I want to. And in some themes, there might also just be a global setting. So then you would go to the theme settings and maybe you would find something along the lines of yeah, currency, currency conversion. And then you might just have a checkbox there to enable or disable it. Now, if your theme really doesn't come with a pre-built currency selector, those can also be added later on. Or if you think they're a little too plain, because yeah, right now it's just text, right? And maybe you want to have something nicer with a little icon, a small flag next to the country, um, makes it a bit more engaging, looks a bit more professional. Um, yeah, then all of that can be done through coding. And I might do a future video on that. But if you already want to have it done, then yeah, feel free to reach out. I can put you in touch with someone who can help. Or if you want to learn development yourself, that would also be awesome because yeah, education is actually my main business. Um, so far, I've already worked with over 3000 awesome developers from all over the world and help them become freelancers or find jobs in agencies or tech companies. So if any of that sounds interesting, then yeah, always keep an eye on the description. They will always find the best ways to get in touch or the best offers that I have. Okay, so far so good. Now with this currency selector in place, we should also be able to convert currencies. So right now you can see that everything is in USD, but let me switch to British pounds. And we can see that it works, awesome. And we should also be able to carry that all the way into the checkout. So I already have two coffees here or two packs of coffee in my cart. And then in the checkout area, we should also be able to see pounds. How cool is that? And yeah, that's literally how easy it is to set things up and get started. Maybe as a last note, I want to show you what happens if you add multiple countries to a market that could be interesting for Europe, for example. So then I would go and click on add market. And yeah, now it really depends on whether you want to expand to entire Europe at once 
or if you just want to have a few selected countries first so maybe you just want to test the waters with let's say germany and spain and if it's only two countries then i would recommend only basically creating two separate markets for both of these countries uh, i'll show you why in a second so let's go with the example of creating a market for europe uh, so then i would just scroll down to the section where the european countries start yes let's just select all of them for the sake of this demonstration um okay uk is currently also included in in our separate market so i'll include all european countries except the uk this is continental europe not european union so uk excluded so now we're in the settings for this combined market europe uh, let's go to products and pricing again as a base currency i would now set it to euro although not all countries in europe have euro as a currency for example poland denmark they still have their own currency but customers would still see their local currency so in denmark people would still see danish crowns if you have this option here selected that's basically just the, the base currency or the fallback if you want but that already shows one of the problems we have here because all the product prices here would be treated equally yeah so a person in germany would see the same euro price as a person in greece for example and then again in europe different countries have different purchasing power potentially so you might as well consider to create individual markets for these countries like one market for germany one market for spain one market for greece if you want to have certain price adjustments and then on the front end all these different countries also appear in the currency selector so it becomes a bit busy in here which is not the biggest problem because with ip redirect visitors immediately get redirected to the right currency or to the currency of where they're based but yeah i think the biggest consideration here is do you want to have fine grain control over individual product prices for different countries or do you just want to batch them all together and say okay europe is a new market and then start selling right there and yeah i hope everything so far made sense and that this is a useful guide also don't stress about it too much because nothing in here is set in stone yeah you can always change the configuration later if you need to and now you know how to get started and how to make the first steps on your own all right and that's all i have for today um if you want to work together at one point in the future i would love to yeah you you know where to find me i'm here and then have an amazing rest of your day i'll catch you next one bye